I traveled to Northwest Montana with the twin goals of spending time in studio with an extraordinary artist and exploring the potential of collaborating with him on one of our projects. I found David discreetly tucked into a quiet meadowscape fringed with forest land just west of Flathead Lake. As dusk fell, we spiraled into a conversation that reminded me in many ways of the movie My Dinner with Andre. The following morning, as my host prepared breakfast, I was allowed to film his home and studio, which are one and the same. Most of what one experiences in this place, apart from the beauty of the land itself, has been created by the artist. The home has a warmth and character wholly apart from mainstream construction. It itself is a work of craft and art, and everywhere within it, everywhere you turn, is more art, more craft. Artifacts of exploration and expression are stacked atop one another, crowding one another for space, some have forgotten, some still in the process of some kind of emergence. Artifacts of creativity, curiosity, and bursts of pure hard work lay everywhere, scattered about like fall leaves after a main windstorm. The work splays across boundaries of artistic mediums, always exploring and expressing the raw properties of the materials in play. Um, no, I just, I just had this, I made this thing, drew it, and I couldn't, even after I drew it, I couldn't tell which way it should, should set. Um, but it, it just changes, um, you know, at certain points it becomes sort of this anthropomorphic or zoomorphic form, and, and, and then other times it sort of has, I don't know, it just, it just I just couldn't decide, so I put it on a, a gimbal. How did you balance it? That's, that could have taken some time. No, I just, I, well, I, I knew it would fit balance this way, it would balance flat. So I just put a you know, ball down there and just found that spot where it would bounce. <laughs> I knew it had to translate to the vertical. I, I Delightfully whimsical moves, like a compass consisting of a metal bar suspended from a string with a clothespin mount, stand aside authors like William James and Alfred North Whitehead, <laughs> offering trace clues about the mental travels happening here in the silence of days and nights in a solitary space where there is no clear division between life, work, and play. Not to suggest that this is a playhouse. This is a place very much about work and an ongoing earnest search for a sense of meaning and worth. There is melancholy here. There are ebbs and flows of energies and strength. But above all, what resonates for me here is a sense of the beauty of authenticity. A little bit of that aspect. Stand back, have a pint. Yeah, exactly. You know, I can't do that. I did not approach David with a specific aspect of potential collaboration in mind, but rather to just explore potential commonalities in our work, which, if present, would afford tremendous opportunities to our clients and, and to him. David spreads himself thin, and he needs to be thoughtful about committing to new projects. We spoke at some length about the aspects of our work that would be most engaging for him to collaborate with us on. But mostly, I spent my time with him just absorbing what he's up to. His interaction with the materials that he works with is profoundly interesting and inspiring. He draws heavily on science to create art, and in this and many other regards, operates in a space I both resonate with and admire. The potential applications of his talent are limited only by the imagination. Well, also by logistics. There are only so many hours available to any of us. But just look at these complex forms. Who would guess that they all fit together to create another seamless form? You're looking at a three-dimensional jigsaw puzzle, but without an image or a border to help you out. He creates fascinating patterns and textures in a wide variety of materials, the potential applications for which are overwhelming to think about. Some of these materials are exotic, some of them are common, low-cost materials. 
Another thing David and I share is a reliance David on and, and a belief in process. We are of a common mind that creative work is pretty much just that, work. <laughs> we both believe creativity is something earned. Martin Heidegger famously claimed, only if we are capable of dwelling, only then can we build. For him, the active process of engagement with a place and time, living with intentionality, was the only way we could become true to ourselves and to a place. It seems to me that that is but very you know, much what David is up to here. It's a very different way of life than what most of us take for granted as normal in a consumer-driven materialistic culture. David is living a very different kind of materialism. He's breathing life into materials and at the same time into his own life. I think his gift to others may just be a glimpse of that.